Hello and welcome to my lesson in precalculus slash maths of all sorts. I tried making a lesson before this and I realized I had centered the paper incorrectly and consequently my video was rendered useless. So I'm going to try again and this time I am full of food and the wonderful energy that food produces. Okay, so today we're going to talk about real zeros and multiplicity, which is um, a part of <clears throat> polynomial functions. So, we're going to start out with a little refresher on polynomial functions, because you need to know about them in order to do this. And, yeah, if you are doing this in class, then you probably... I've done this very recently. Okay, so a polynomial function has the format a to base n times x to the n power plus a base n minus 1 to x to the n minus 1 plus dot dot dot, etc, uh, etc. Et a base 1x plus a to the 0, that being an, uh, a monomial with no variable just a constant. Okay, so an example of this would be function of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. And now I'm going to keep on checking the camera over and over again. But you can't really tell that I'm doing that because all you can see is my hand. Isn't that great? Okay, <clears throat> so this is our polynomial function and it can be factored. So it can be factored. As Spock would say, sensors, factors, perhaps, who knows. Okay, so to factor this, we have our old technique of FOIL, and we're doing the reverse of FOIL. So I've done this already, and the factors are x plus 2 and x plus 3. That is because x times x for the f, first, outer, inner, last. x times x, the first um, the first parts of each of these factors, is x squared. 2 times x is 2x. 3 times x is 3x. 2x plus 3x is 5x. And 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, you probably didn't need that review right now, but just in case. Okay, so... What we need to do in order to find the real zeros is find our good old friends, the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are where y equals zero. And we can look at a graph just to uh, show that. So let's say we have a graph that looks like this. Okay. That's a nice little x-squared type graph or an even function as we'll probably learn more about later. And this point where it touches the x-axis are the x-intercepts, these two points. And they are where y equals zero on the function. So the graph represents the function, and where y equals zero, we have these two points. They might be, say, negative one, zero, uh, negative one, zero, and negative three, zero, perhaps. Uh, we're not being specific right now, so it doesn't matter that much. So, we have um, y equals 0. So, in order to get that, we know that y equals function of x. And function of x equals our function written out. So, function of x equals x plus 2 times x plus 3. So, if we want to set that to 0, all we have to do is say 0 is x plus 2 times x plus 3. Groovy. Okay, so to get this equal to zero, um, we have to make each of these factors, the x plus two and the x plus three, equal to zero. Because if x plus two equals zero, then zero times x plus three will equal zero. And if x plus three equals zero, then zero times x plus two will equal zero. And we will have our wonderful x-intercepts. So let's do that. We will take each factor and set it to zero, okay? So minus two, minus two, 
Okay, x equals negative 2. That's one of our factors. Um, x plus 3 equals 0. Minus 3, minus 3. x equals negative 3. You could do that just by eyeballing it. Say what plus 3 equals 0? Negative 3. What plus 2 equals 0? Negative 2. So we have our x-intercepts. x-intercepts equal set notation, negative 3. The, the lower number goes on the left. And negative 2. OK. What is next? OK, let's see. We have our graph. And this is still on screen, which is good. OK. Our graph. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We have a point there and a point there. These are our x-intercepts. So this is negative 3, 0. And negative 2, 0. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. I hope you're as excited about this as I am. Okay. So, now I want to define real zeros and make sure everything's on the screen. Real zeros. Real zeros. I don't know if you can hear it, but my roommates are eating lunch downstairs and they're making quite a ruckus. And I love the word ruckus. So... If you want to make me happy, say ruckus. If, <clears throat> if f is a function, ruckus, <laughs> okay, and r, a variable, is a real number, real number, remember that sign? I hope you do, for which function of r equals zero. So remember what that means. When you have your function and r is plugged in, your variable number that you have, then the entire function will equal zero. Okay? So, blah, blah, blah. If f is a function, r, which is the real zero, is a real number for which f of r equals zero, r is called, r is, riz, okay, r is called Talk like a robot. R is called a real zero of f of the function. It's a real zero of the function. You notice where f of r equals zero. f of r is the same thing as y. Okay? So where y equals zero, r is called a real zero of f. In other words, we'll have our two properties here. One, R is an X intercept. What? What? Mind blown. Yeah. Pretty sure that's mind blowing. Okay. So, yeah, I hope you don't have any brains coming out your ears or anything because your mind was so blown. Okay. Another important property. These are two properties of real zeros x minus r is a factor of f. So, back to our example. Our example was function of x. I don't need to go back. Ain't nobody got time for that. Function of x is x plus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, so let's see. The real zeros. Hmm. Okay, we already found the x-intercepts. Do I have to go through all that again? Well, okay. R equals the x-intercepts equals negative 3 and negative 2. Okay. So, if we take a look at this, x minus r is a factor of f. So, x minus negative 2 is a factor of f x minus negative 2 is the exact same thing as x plus negative 2. Isn't that groovy? Okay. And x minus negative 3 <coughs> is the same thing as x plus 3. Hooray! <laughs> so we know that x minus r is a factor of f. That's just another way of verifying or even finding it out. Say you wanted to find this out, um, 
by using that technique, you could just say negative whatever the number is. And it's the same thing when you have these factors. Okay. Okay, what's next? Multiplicity. Multiplicity. Still on screen. Let's move that up. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay, multiplicity. Multiplicity is... This is my wonderful definition that I made up myself. And if you are a math expert, which I am not a math major or anything. I majored in biology in college. So if you have a better definition and there's something terribly wrong with this, feel free and let me know in a friendly way, please. <laughs> I don't handle things very well. Handle meanness. Wow, okay. How many times X minus R occurs? And that is based on the exponent. So it's how many times the factor occurs. How many times that R occurs in a sense. So what if we have the example function of X equals um, 2X cubed. Yes, I did it right this time. 2X cubed times X plus 3 times x minus 5 squared. All right. We have we have uh, three real zeros in this polynomial function. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay. So the real zeros are where the entire thing equals zero, the x-intercepts. So let's say x minus r. So minus 3. Uh, so yeah, minus three. <laughs> we will have one x-intercept slash r at doo -doo 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 -doo, negative three. So to set x plus three equal to zero. So what plus three equals zero? Negative three. Look at that. Okay. And what minus five equals zero is negative five. And then for this one, uh, we just have to have this equal to zero. So that one is evidently zero. <laughs> if you say zero cubed is zero times two is zero times x plus three times x minus five squared is zero. So that one is actually pretty simple. Okay, so now we have our real zeros and we must find their multiplicity. So Let's see, for example, negative three, going from left to right here, negative three has a multiplicity. So this is based on the exponent. What is the exponent of x plus three, the factor altogether? The exponent of x plus three is actually one. There's nothing there. So that means it's raised to the one power, which means it's just itself, it's there. So the exponent is one. And that means the multiplicity is one. So it's raised to the one power, multiplicity. Multiplicity equals one. Ha ha. Let's go to zero next. Zero, that is raised to the third power. So its multiplicity is three. Multi, <laughs> cool, good enough. Multiplicity is three. All right, so these are our zeros and these are their multiplicities. For five. 5, x minus 5, the factor is raised, the x minus r bit here, the factor is raised to the second power, so it's squared. The multiplicity then is 2. All right, so there's one more property we can learn from this. 